plateau and I've aged 10,000, 100 million, billion years since my last video, not physically, but I've become that much more learned. I finished applying to my master's program, international research scholarship, so that was as stressful as that sounds. Uh, if you're thinking about it, hard pass. My mental has been so boomed and I'm probably not even gonna get it, so I suffered for nothing. So it's out of my hands at this point and we'll see how that goes. In the meantime, I've been reading a bunch of books. I read some stuff. I watched a bunch of movies too, so we'll update you on that. Here's a, a little quick run through. Uh, Our Wives Under the Sea, I'm reading this right now. Speedboat, I'm also reading. And then The Piano Teacher. These are both buddy reads. This one with Cammy. this one with Sean. But um, yeah, baby steps into these, like 60 pages into both. I'm like 80 pages into this one. I also just finished like five other books. I read Pachinko by Min Jin Lee. I read The Last Samurai by Helen DeWitt. Agua Viva by Clarice Lispector. Star by Yukio Mishima. And Flowers of Buffoonery by Osamu Dazai. And then I also read Monsters of Fan's Dilemma by Claire Debrider. De 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 Sorry. Uh, I read that, and then I also read Saving Time by Jenny O'Dell. So, yeah, actually a lot of books to catch up on. I don't know how I did that in two weeks. Shout out to distracting myself. I also watched a ton of movies. I finally got my paws on a Criterion subscription, and I am as annoying as you would expect. I've watched a movie a day for the last two weeks, really like reinvigorated on that, and I'm happy to be enjoying movies. 14 movies, how many books was that? Like seven books. And then I also went to a jazz festival to see Herbie Hancock live, which was really cool down in New Orleans. So I'll just include like a vlog because I recorded some stuff while I was out there. And then I'll be back another day to, to talk about all the stuff that I did. Bye. <laughs>
yeah. <laughs> Take me to church. Oh, <laughs> oh this one? Okay, so while I was putting these vinyl in the back, I had an intrusive thought of I'm Bjork, she call me Bjorky. My I'm going trash talk crazy. I'm blade, she call me blade. Worms inside of my head are applauding. Okay, rapid fire, here are some thoughts on the books I am reading and finished. Our Wives Under the Sea, so far so good. This is a sapphic domestic horror tinged story about this couple, they get split up. One of them has like this disaster while on like a submarine expedition and gets trapped under the ocean. They come back and there's something off about them. They're like craving salt water and like getting little scales or some shit. I don't know what's going to happen, but something bad is going to occur and I'm excited for it to kick off. The Piano Teacher is another, not sapphic, but domestic horror book where there's a mother and a daughter living together and they should not be allowed within 100 feet of each other. Um, seeing them interact is like hair raising. They are both like unwell and you kind of just follow them. I'm early on into this, but it's already pretty striking. Um, there's some events where I'm already imagining what it's going to be like in the movie version, the Hanenke movie. And I'm so excited to watch that because I can already tell it is going to make me want to throw up. Then we have Speedboat, which is very sparse and disconnected. I'll see if I can show. There's a ton of white space and each of them is like a disjointed sort of section or thought or like event. Um, there is like a framework of a narrative. It's the same character in a lot of them. But um, yeah, so far they feel pretty distant. I can't help but compare it to like Raymond Carver. Uh, which is a good thing, but I'm waiting for something to happen that I like fully, fully enjoy because this has a ton of praise and I don't think I'm there yet, although I've only read the first two chapters, so fingers crossed. Okay, now onto some books I finished. Um, Agua Viva by Clarice Lispector. Second one, uh, liked it less than Hour of the Star, but still got a lot out of this super skinny like super super duper skinny still took me like four days because i could only digest 20 ish pages at a time i do like the first half more than the second half i'm not sure if that's like a universal sentiment but um they felt pretty distinct to me this is very much a book about writing something about being present in the moment like the immediate moment and trying to connect a bunch of moments or like allow them to exist it got a little bit too metaphorical at times for me to like fully keep up and I'm still not convinced I understood it but the feeling I had while reading it was positive and being forced to kind of think about the immediate moment that I was in was affronting because normally I read to like detach and this was like pay attention what are you feeling right now what's happening right now how many times have you you're, you're breathing manually if you you have just lost the game and yeah, I was freaking out. Like, my brain started taking screenshots and shit. It was short-circuiting. But, um, yeah. Who was doing it like her? No one, really. Uh, then I read Star by Yukio Mishima. This is like a psychosexual sort of erotic thriller. Well, maybe I'm overselling it. It's, it's a thriller. Uh, it's about an actor who is, like, beloved by all. And the disconnect that he feels in terms of, like, wearing multiple different masks. One to, like act in the first place and then one to like interact with an audience then him interacting with like his assistant who he has like a relationship with behind the scenes and then lastly like him to himself and it gets pretty surreal like he'll be acting and you sort of lose track of like where the scene ends and where his imagination is taking off um it's another short book uh this is a recurring theme i read a lot of skinnies to break up some of the longer books that i was reading that i'll get to but I enjoyed this a lot in the moment. I think it's pretty ahead of its time in terms of like when this came out, which I think, if I remember correctly, was like the 50s. If you're into surrealism, check it out. 
Then, speaking of surrealism, I read The Flowers of Buffoonery, which is not so much surrealism, but very postmodern, although it came out in the 30s, so it's like pre-postmodern. It plays with form a lot, and it's like delivered in a very interesting way, where this is meant to be like the prequel to No Longer Human, which I haven't read the proper book of No Longer Human, but I've read the manga version, which I understand is not directly the same, but I know what the story is. And this did not feel very connected to it, outside of the main character's name being the same. That's about as far as it goes. This is about like a failed suicide attempt, and the boy like living for a weekend in like this hospital and forming a relationship with his friend, like his cousin and the nurse. And it's kind of it. It's very wistful, very hopeful, very like plotless, um, very meditative, and like an oceanside hospital. It's I don't know. There was tinged with a lot of different emotions. It's another very short book, but the selling point, like the kicker, is the author, like, or an author character, I'm still not super sure, just interrupting, telling the story to, like, complain about how bad the story is, or, like, how poor of a job he's doing, or the struggle that he's facing in terms of, like, depicting a certain scene the right way. The author talks throughout this, and it's, like I said, very, like, postmodern in terms of, like, breaking up form although this is a very old book so i don't know what's going on here but uh hesitate to keep saying ahead of his time but potentially we will just have to see then i read two very big books these are just examples to like show page counts because i don't have physical versions but yeah i read these hence why i read these so the first one that i read was pachinko which is like 500 pages it's like this very big international intergenerational story about this korean family that like grows up and then travels to japan and like immigration and motherhood and having a sense of home and a sense of family i've heard a lot of praise for this book i've seen a lot of my friends give it five stars sadly did not feel the same way in terms of it being like super transformative i enjoyed it i still got a lot out of it i cried but I did see some like pretty glaring flaws, even my first way through, where the pacing is so fast, which is a plus, the pacing of it was still manageable. So like it did find a good middle ground in terms of like expanding and like increasing stakes while not just like drowning you in character names and like overwhelming you in terms of like how fast things are moving, but things still move pretty fast. And it never spends that much time on one specific character, so some of the minor ones get like swept aside and like a lot of them are recurring characters and you see them at different points in their life and it's like very cool to see it all played out it's like very intelligently written and planned out and like methodical but not all of them have the same weight and so there are some moments that you were very much expected to care about blank character like having some tragedy occur I'm gonna make up like a fake relationship, but like basically be like, oh no, my brother, the brother's father, oh no, something terrible is happening. But they don't have like any characteristics outside of just being their dad. But because it's like, oh, but that's his dad, you're like expected to care because it's like that, that's his dad. But the dad has never spoken in, in ever. So do we really care? No, I didn't. Personally, just, just me, I did not. And there's, there's like three or four characters like that where they don't really exist and then something will happen or like they're used for like a plot device and it just didn't really carry any weight. And so I was a little bit taken out of it. Uh, more than once while reading, I was just like, oh, okay, well that moment didn't land fully, but I'm sure the next one will. And uh, yeah, it, it happened more than once. Anyways, that's my only complaint. I liked it, I cried. I'm not gonna like pretend that I didn't like the book, but there are some glaring issues that's it. Um, another book I read was The Last Samurai by Helen DeWitt. This one was like 550, so the longest of the bunch, and I enjoyed it a lot. Really singular. I'm not even going to attempt to describe what this book was about because certain sections it was very plotless, but I will say the immediate experience of reading this book was so fun and like engaging and like challenging, and getting through certain s sections was like very rewarding. Although I would finish it and be like, nice, I read for a while. And then I'd be like, I can't name a single thing that happened. But that was fun. Um, there's two halves of the book. And the second one is definitely more structured. There's more of like a narrative, albeit a formulaic one, 
which to me felt like the only downside was in the second half being able to tell what was happening um because so much of the fun that i had was like just being completely blown away by like what i was experiencing and it feeling very refreshing and just unique in terms of a book and then it kind of collapsing into like one possible like outcome so so outside of like that gripe this book was so crazy awesome cuckoo bears i i really liked it like a lot um i will say not everyone will like this cami i was trying to read this with gave up i don't even blame them because they were making up some like weird words at the start like some of them had like minimum 50 letters in them it was very singular very unique but also very challenging at times which it reminded me of a lot of different books i've read or like different authors that i like like a collage like kaleidoscope of like a lot of little details of some books like in some places it reminded me of like permafrost and some check out 19 and some pure color and some like i don't even know this shit was crazy um helen dewitt is a really cool writer uh i feel like a lot of people read her other one the english understand wool like the short new editions version this one myself included liked it um but yeah this book was also really good so if you've read it before or if you're interested definitely do it although it's 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 a weird one. Oh, two more books that i read uh both non-fiction both the most recent ones that i read monsters a fan's dilemma and saving time by jenny odell they both kind of fit the same niche in terms of like tackling larger political themes of like patriarchy capitalism and just like politics in general in relation to for monsters it'd be like art and then for uh, saving time it would be like leisure and art and leisure kind of go hand in hand so i felt like they were kind of doing the same thing albeit to different levels of success i thought saving time was not as good i'd give it like a sideways thumb and i would give monsters a fan's dilemma a thumb and a half up yeah, I wrote a bunch about both of these. I'm not going to like regurgitate it because I don't want to like read a script, but I'll put that on the screen somewhere. Uh, you can read it. Basically, it boils down to it tackles a lot of like very cool, interesting themes, especially in terms of like patriarchy. I thought it was cool to see some aspects of art that are kind of lesser thought about and seeing the environment that led to our current system. Both of them kind of have the same issue where like, the voice behind it is just uh tinged in white guilt although to different extremes uh but they're both basically like here's my take on the effects of capitalism on art from the perspective of a harry potter mom who wrote this during the trump administration i don't know i wrote i wrote enough about both of these so again just read that if you like super want to know but um yeah jenny odell's one was like super like white guilt it was insane there's one part where like she's like i was on a beach and i saw a dead bird and i know so many americans have seen so much worse but i couldn't help but feel it's like just say you felt bad like why you don't need to like preamble on like all this stuff like girl we get it it's okay uh but yeah she does that a bunch she also like talks extensively about her last book and just like expounds on like a ton of shit and if the best part of your book is citing someone else did you really write a good book no not really um monsters was a lot better uh shout out to both of those but that kind of brings me to my future reads outside of like my buddy read pile um the last two nonfiction books i've read i've gotten a lot out of and so I've been thinking, I was like, hmm. I worded this next part so weird. Okay, basically, I asked for a bunch of recommendations for nonfiction, got a bunch of them, and I'll do like a book haul of all the stuff I got. Hello again. Uh, Pato from a week later editing this. I've read more books, so just going to kind of throw these in here at the end. But some of them I already started talking about, but um, I've since finished them, so... Saving Time by Jenny O'Dell and Our Wives Under the Sea, done with both, both pretty underwhelming, I'll be honest. I think I already talked about Saving Time, uh, so I won't super go into that. And then Our Wives Under the Sea just felt underwhelming. There was like a lot of very slow buildup towards finding out about the events that took place and kind of like wanting this revelation, 
which never really comes. It ends in like a very ephemeral and kind of like just trailing off ending that I didn't really love, especially with like how much it's sort of pointing towards there being something for you to understand. Uh, it just didn't sit super well. Also, the chapters are really short, and the longer that that went on, the more I disliked that. Wish that there was just more time spent inside each setting, so that the sort of negative feelings, like the anxiety of each person could like sit for longer instead of like really weird like jump cuts between perspectives. But didn't hate it, it just felt all right. I was really excited for it and then it just didn't really go anywhere. Um, I've been reading more of The Piano Teacher, liking it, although I hesitate to say that. Um, it's making me more uncomfortable, which I think is what the book is going for, so liking it or it's doing its job. But right now there's like a lot of self-harm and horniness, so it's uncomfortable to read. I also started reading The Trial by Franz Kafka. I'm like 70 pages in, and so far I'm liking it. It's kind of just like a comedy of errors, a lot of like yellow tape and bureaucracy and just all exaggerated to a hundred and... I don't know. It's not really giving classic to me. Uh, or at least not anything like super profound like I was expecting, but also I'm like two chapters in, so maybe maybe it'll get somewhere that I'm not expecting, but so far I'm liking it, but I'm not blown away. Another book that I was pretty blown away by is Commonwealth by Ann Patchett. I started reading it and I couldn't put it down, finished it in like two days. It was just so exactly what I wanted, like a generational family saga story. But it's on the shorter side, it's only like 300 something pages, and the pacing is so fast. There's like really big spans of time that are missing, changes perspective a bunch, all the voices are really distinct. I found it funny and snarky, but also like very layered. There's like a lot of different messaging going on and a lot of recoloring past events. Overall, I just was really impressed. I feel like everything it tried to do, it did, at least to a passing level, if not exceeding my expectations. And yeah, I mean, I think me having this many books I'm juggling and starting something and then finishing it by the next day just goes to show that it's it's that good. Yeah, I couldn't put it down. Um, and I think those are all the books that I'm reading. Oh, uh, one more. I'm about to start Slow Days Fast Company by Eve Babbitts with Ben, Benjamin Journal. Excited about that. So I'll be doing that this afternoon. I loved Black Swans. The more I think about it especially, it's such a good book, so more Eve Babbitts is on the way. I used to have a physical copy of this book, like the NYRB. I don't know where it is, I'm pretty sure I lent it to a friend, and I think that they moved away, so yeah. Got it from the library, so finally can start that, and I think that's where I'm at bookwise. although I think I mentioned it, the nonfiction book haul. Yeah, the stack is building, uh, they're coming in. My birthday's next week, so this was like an early present to myself. That I shouldn't really have done, but at the same time, finished that application, birthday, why not? Uh, so, yeah. I Okay, I think that's it, book-wise. I think. Uh, yeah. Bye.